Okay, so this is, uh, I mean, there's lots and lots of examples. There's tons. But I mean, this is just three of them. And actually, I think I'll just give you a fourth one just because it's kind of a neat one. Um, it turns out that action and reaction pairs, they can actually help us to predict something about even, believe it or not, how we find planets around other stars, at least one of the methods. So exoplanets, it turns out. So exoplanet detection. This is just something that I know about just because I've been looking at it in my own studies. So exoplanet detection, at least using the radial velocity method, sometimes called the Doppler method. What happens there is, okay, we're trying to find a planet around another star. But the problem is, this star is so far away, maybe I'll draw it in uh, yellow here, so maybe I'll just color it yellow. So that's my star. And then we have a little planet going around it. So let's say this is a little planet right here going around. Dee, 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 dee. There's the planet orbiting around the star. Now the problem is, though, that we are so far away from this that actually we can't we can't really see the planet. Well, it turns out actually through really clever ways we can start to actually see the planet. But in this method of detection, you don't even need to see the planet. All you do is you look at the star only. Now, the reason why you normally can't see the planet, or at least certainly not easily, is because this star is so bright and the planet is so dim compared to it. I mean, the planet either gives off no light or very little light, but the star gives off tons of light. It's like trying to look at the sun and see a tiny little firefly, you know, that's sort of you know, zipping around. You're not going to see it. The sun's way too bright. Well, that's the equivalent of what's happening here. So if we can't take a direct picture of a planet going around another star, just because they're so far away and the star is so bright compared to the planet, we don't have the resolution needed in order to sort of distinguish between the planet and the star. So what we do then is a really clever way. We say, okay, no problem. This planet and this star should form an action-reaction pair, which means when the planet goes around the star, technically the star should move a little bit around the planet. So when you imagine an orbit, a lot of people imagine the star stays fixed and the planet just goes around the star. That is not correct. What actually happens is the star itself wobbles a little bit. Now the planet orbits really far, you know, has a big orbit of, uh, or a big radius of orbit. Of course, we're assuming it's a circular orbit when it's not really, it's a little bit elliptical, but still. If we look at this as the planet goes around, it actually makes the star wobble. So when the planet's over here, it turns out the star's center of gravity is actually going to be a little bit over here. So the star will actually sort of move a little bit to the left. And as the planet's, let's say, over here, then the star's going to be over here. As the planet's over here, the star's going to be a little bit over here. As this planet's over here, the star's going to be over here. In other words, it's like the star sort of wobbles a little bit too. So all we do is we watch the star carefully there's someone down below in my apartment in the apartment below who's got a baby who's really crying and screaming I don't know if you can hear that but uh, sorry uh, I suppose the baby's not uh, very happy for whatever reason so anyway we watch the star carefully we see it well I'm gonna say the word wobble so we see it sort of we see the star sort of go back and forth. So we see it wobble and uh, can uh, detect the planet that way. This is really cool. And it turns out, I mean, how do we actually see the star wobble? It turns out we can break up the star's light into a spectrum, and it turns out the spectral lines are going to shift from left to right. So if we actually take the light from the star and we we expect to see you know, certain transitions. Let's say we've got like these different lines. If you've ever heard about this, this is uh, doing something called spectroscopy. So in the star, we have these different uh, transitions happening. So maybe you have an electron in hydrogen going from one excited state to another. And when it drops down, it emits light of a very specific wavelength. Turns out, let's say we expect it to be right here. And there's another one that we know of, maybe that's right here, and maybe another one that's right here. What we do is we watch the star very carefully and we take lots and lots of these sort of spectrum pictures like this. Okay, so what, what we can do, um, we can take a look at that and look at this um, spectrum. And what we notice then is that these lines, let's say, let's say there's these three lines right here. Well, it turns out when the star, the star, if, if the planets lined up correctly with us, let's say this is, this is Earth here, way far away. 
Well then, if the planets, these unseen planets going around the star, it's going to make the star basically wobble back and forth. If a star goes back and forth, it's sometimes called the Doppler method for a reason. It's because we're going to see these lines right here. Well, all of a sudden, maybe I take a picture later on and I see that all these lines are a little bit to the left. So maybe they're all sort of, they're all just a little bit to the left. So they're all a little bit, you know, this way. And if I take a picture a little bit later, maybe these same three red lines this time are to the right. So basically it's like these little lines right here, these little blue ones, it's like they're moving from left to the right, to the left, to the right. In other words, they're sort of wobbling around this central value here. What that tells us, it turns out, is that that tells us that if it's blue shifted, in other words, towards smaller wavelengths, it's going um, towards us. And then if it's going what we call red shifted, it's going away from us. So it turns out just by looking at this spectrum, uh, doing this spectrum here of a star's light, just by looking at this, if we look at it over time and we see all these lines sort of go like, whoa, to the left and to the right and to the left and to the right, and we see all of them doing it by the same amount. If we see that happening, then we can say, aha, it's likely that the star is actually going towards us, away from us, towards us, away from us, right? Because that's a piece of this thing going around in a circle. It turns out just from that, we can do a graph of, you know, how fast these things are actually going away from us. This is the speed and this is time. We can get the period from the type of star. We can actually figure out the mass of the planet. We can figure out how far it's orbiting. From there, we can even figure out if we think there could be life on it because we can estimate the temperature. It is so cool. So there's real sort of science fiction sounding stuff, you know, to try to say, could there be, you know, ET living on this planet? And it turns out one of the ways of detecting it is just using uh, the radial velocity method. And what happens then is it's because this planet and the star are forming an action reaction pair. As the planet goes around the star, the star technically goes around as well. The star also orbits a little bit because of the planet. Now, last thing is you might wonder, well, why, um, what happens if there's more than one planet? you know, going around, then it gets more complicated, obviously, then these wobbles are very complex. And then you need some pretty neat computer systems to sort of disentangle this. But in a one planet situation, it's pretty straightforward, it'll just make the star wobble back and forth. But all that just to show some examples of how it is that Newton's law works. Newton's third law says that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That means you do one thing, the opposite happens. It tells you about forces, that the one force on the other is the same as the other force on the one. And it explains things like skateboarding, while you push on one end and you go that way. Or how do you jump? You push down and you go up. Or how a rocket works, you spit stuff out to one side, you go to the other side. So Newton's third law has tons, really a lot of different practical examples for us.